Ladies and gentlemen, Gloria Estefan. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It is truly an honor to be here among such incredible speakers with such amazing stories. And you know, about a year ago, I got a call from a friend of mine and says, uh, there's a priest looking for you. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, what did I do now? And I went to Catholic school. That uh, cassock is still very daunting to me. And uh, I wondered what could this priest possibly want with me. Then I found out he was from Rome and from the Vatican. So uh, we met, and uh, Father Guerra, thank you very much for this amazing experience. He sat down and I thought, well, what could Father Guerra want with me? Uh, maybe he found out that my mom was gonna be a nun. She spent six months in a convent being a novice, but obviously I'm here, so you know how that turned out. <laughs> maybe he found out that the nuns in the school that I went to, all-girl Catholic high school, tried to recruit me to be a nun. Nun material right here, yes, I see it. I was uh, raised Catholic in Catholic school, so quite honestly, that makes me a bit irreverent. And uh, I've been very open about everything, including in school, where I would interrogate the nuns to no end because I've always been very curious. My mom called me the question girl. I always questioned everything, and I wanted answers. And uh, the nun's answer would always be, it's a mystery. You have to believe. So I kept looking for things that I do believe. And one thing that I've never, ever doubted was the fact that the basic teaching of my Christian faith, my Catholic faith, that you do unto others as you would want them to do to you, and that you love your neighbor as yourself. And despite the fact that I started searching uh, through the university, I read many things. I read Greek Hermetic philosophy. I read books on all religions, uh, including my own. I kept wondering, asking, asking questions, and uh, living my life on that tenet to continue to just love everyone as I would wish to be loved and treat them as I would wish to be treated. So when I joined the band in 1975, Miami Latin Boys, we started writing music because I sing since I talk. I started singing at the age of two, and uh, it was my way of expressing. It was my catharsis. It was my way of feeling stronger, my escape from the difficult things that I was facing in my life. And uh, I realized that music was almost like my religion. So when I started getting the opportunity to write and share with people, I was very aware of the daunting uh, effect that music can have, a wonderful effect too, it can have, because when I was growing up, the music of others got me through some very difficult times. It gave me ways of thinking, uh, ideas, uh, how can I cope with this? It let me cry, express, locked up in my room, and my father very ill from Agent Orange when he came back from Vietnam, and I wanted to be strong for my mother. So I would lock myself up in my room and I would play my guitar and I would cry and I would let everything out so that I could be strong for her. So it was very clear for me, very clear, how important it is when an artist creates a piece of music, a lyric, a painting, a, a book, a poem, a building. Artists have the unique responsibility and privilege to influence other people in some way both in the positive and in the negative. And each time I would write a word to a song, I would imagine what kind of effect these words could have on the person that was listening. And I wanted to share in the experience of making it a positive experience for them, of empowering them, of making them feel stronger, of maybe saying something to a loved one that they had no way of knowing how to say in, in a love song, maybe just entertaining them, making them dance, making them have fun and just forgetting their problems for a bit. Music was a wonderful way for me to communicate, and it was, for me, a very big responsibility. So in and among the songs that I started writing that, that some of you might know, there were love songs, there were party songs, there were songs just to have fun. There was even one song where I warn you that the rhythm is gonna get you. Yes, the rhythm is gonna get you. Be very afraid. But then my musings, the thoughts that I have on 
many things started getting into my songs. I thought it was important. I don't like to preach. I don't like to tell people what to do. I think everyone has to make up their own mind. But I thought every time that a song is played on the radio or someone hears it, it's almost like a prayer going out into the universe, into the cosmos. It's a way of putting positive vibrations out into our world. And I truly believe that thoughts create reality. I think that every thought that emanates from our mind and every emotion that comes from our being becomes a part of this interwoven tapestry that is our reality day to day. And all of us are creating this moment by moment. And it's very important that we each realize the responsibility that we have for everything that's happening in the world. Even in our own little corner, first in our family, then in our city, our school, our state, our country. And if we could all focus on things that are positive and that move forward, it would be much easier to change things, but of course we're human. We are also fearful, and when things happen, we feel that there's nothing we could do to change it. But through music, I've found a way to reach millions of people and somehow sneak into their psyche a little bit, maybe drop some thoughts that they hadn't thought of before. For example, in the song Oye Mi Canto, I was born in Cuba. I left when I was two years old. My native land is still under the brutal regime of a dictator that denies the people of Cuba every possible freedom you could imagine, especially the freedom of speech. So when I say Oye Mi Canto, which if you think about it literally, it means hear my song, what I really was saying is listen to what I'm telling you. And in the song I'm saying, uh, I believe in love but with no conditions. And giving in sometimes doesn't make it submission. Hate is so common, it's almost tradition. Come on, let's leave it behind and make that transition. So every time someone hears that song, maybe a little bit of it will get into their psyche. It's an incredible connection that, I, that I'm able to have through music. And that connection was never more real in, than in 1990 when, uh, I think you saw some images at the beginning of the video, uh, where we had a, an accident while on tour. And uh, usually on a tour bus, you're safe. I mean, there's nothing that can hurt you, but it happened that we got sandwiched between two fully loaded 18-wheelers on a freak snowstorm in the Pocono Mountains on uh, March 20th of 1990, and I broke my back. I was paralyzed. I had a very big fear of being paralyzed because my father was in a wheelchair for many years. I took care of him, and I knew exactly what this meant for my family. So as I was laying there on the floor of the bus, at the peak of my career, I thought, here it is, here's that fear. But deep down inside, I knew and I felt that it was going to be okay. And then, since I was the kind of person that doesn't really like being the center of attention, believe it or not, I just love music, I thought, perhaps this entire career, my fame, the fact that I am very well known worldwide, maybe I have been brought to this moment to somehow show people from this experience, that we can come through very difficult times, that things that seem like miracles are really not miracles, they're ours to have, that miracles are there for us to ask for and to demand and to help make happen. So the entire time that I was recuperating, I kept thinking of everyone that was watching, especially since while I was lying in my hospital bed, not being able to move, strapped to a board, I could feel people's prayers. I was watching on a little TV, people all over the world going to their place of worship. It didn't matter what religion, what culture. They were praying for me, someone they didn't know, someone that they were putting good vibrations, good thoughts, prayers in whatever religion they happened to be a part of. And they were focusing it on me. And I can tell you that it felt like I was plugged into the wall. It was electric. My family would come in, and I would have to kind of make them feel better because they would be crying and I'd go, I'm going to be all right. I know I'm going to be all right. I feel this amazing energy around me. And I channeled it. I channeled it into my body. I imagined my nerves reconnecting in my spine. I used those prayers. And I, when I came out of this experience, I was in doing rehabilitation for six, seven hours a day because I wanted to give it my all so that my family, if I, could do, if I had anything to do with it, didn't have to live the experience. If I would have ended up in a chair, I would have been fine. I would have figured out what to do. But I wanted to put every effort that I could into trying to be back, 
be 100%. And my husband, who is incredibly astute and knows me very well and knows the healing power of music for me, three months after my accident, wanted to get me away from just that focusing on my body. And for him, I went to the studio and he said, I, listen, I want you to come and write with me because the day that they transported us to New York on the helicopters, it was a gray day. It was very, very overcast. But there was a ray of light that kept hitting him in the eyes. And he wrote down on a little piece of paper, coming out of the dark. And he put it in his pants pocket. And three months later, he was going to pay a toll in Miami, and he finds this wrinkled, washed piece of paper that said, coming out of the dark. So he came to me and he said, I want you to come and write this song with me. His plan was to just get me out of this grueling exercise routine and get back focused on what had always healed me, music. And that song, Coming Out of the Dark, which you heard also over that video, poured out of me in 15 minutes. And it was a thank you to everyone in the world that had prayed for me, that had sent me good thoughts, cards, gifts, letters, uh, just ways of making me feel better. And I wanted them also to know about the power of prayer and how important that was. That's why it say, says, coming out of the dark, um, I, I finally see the light now and it's shining on me. I know the love that saved me, you're sharing with me. To me, that was the love of God. Whatever religion you happen to be in, we were sharing that. They were sharing it with me and I was accepting it and I was using it in becoming a stronger and better person. And if uh, music is my religion, then the song Path of the Right Love is kind of my creed. I'd like to play you a little bit of that now. I think we have some. Um, thank you. Wait. Very loosely. Where we come from is love, love, pure love. We're on our way back home and on that way. You never look back because there's nothing there to see. Just look around you. There's always someone that's in need of maybe just kindness as we watch each other bleed from wounds we choose, we never lose. And I think to me, I wanted to share, that also was on the album with Coming Out of the Dark. And it's my musings on God, on uh, you know what I had discovered through this incredible experience of sharing so much love from all over the world and really feeling it, absorbing it, knowing that somehow everyone else had had a lot to do in my recuperation. And I wanted to share that, and I knew that maybe a little bit of those thoughts would somehow stick in the mind of the people that were listening. The song is called Path of the Right Love. We're all on a path, maybe all different paths. Which one is the right path? We're never gonna know until we get back to God. But in the meantime, I think that as long as your path is love, then you're on the right one, regardless of what religion of what culture or whatever may be happening to you. So I really, really do believe that God is love and that it is the perfect love. It is a love that is shared by everyone. And I would love to know exactly how to live my life that way. And that's what I've tried to do, trying to give back in every way that I can, trying to make life better for whoever is listening. And, uh, you can get rid of the video now. Thank you. That's, that's, I just want to talk to them about a couple of other things before we go. I know that time is so short here and it flies by. In 1993, a devastating hurricane hit Miami, Hurricane Andrew. And I w had the opportunity to put out one of my songs called Always Tomorrow. And this song was really meant to remind everyone that we can stand up, that we can get up again, no matter how many things, how many difficulties happen in our lives, we can start over again. And judging from the news in the last few days, as we've all been seeing with our hearts in our hands, when we see the face of that little boy that was blown up for a ridiculous reason, I'm sure, because there is no good reason ever to kill anyone. And it continues to happen, and it's gonna continue to happen. It's part of our world. There's two extremes always. God and obviously to me ignorance and everything in between and I think it's all a learning experience and finding our way towards the God light 
whatever God you may believe in, it's always goodness that you go towards. And in Always Tomorrow, I say, I, I, I guess it took a little time for me to see the reason I was born into this world and what I had to go through before I'd finally realized that I could be infinitely better than before, definitely stronger. I'll face whatever comes my way, savor each moment of the day, love as many people as I can along the way, help someone who's given up if it's just to raise my eyes and pray. That to me is the way that I live my life, the way that I've felt from people such goodness, such giving. And in the song Reach in 1996, I was invited to do the Olympic theme and my father was a part of the 19, uh, in the 50s, part of the Olympics, and he played volleyball. So it was quite a privilege and an honor when they wanted me to do the theme for the Olympics, and I'm thinking, wow, these people that are a part of the Olympics, they really, they take their bodies and their, their minds and, and energies to the limit to reach this goal that most of us wish we could reach in a lifetime. And I thought, how am I gonna write a song that, that has to encompass so much? And finally, what I realized was that I was gonna write a song that spoke to each person that was listening, reminding myself what I had to do to get out of bed every day after that accident, that I had to talk myself into getting up, moving two more inches, because I knew that if I didn't do that that day, the following day it would be that much more difficult. And that kind of, what we need, that kind of discipline and the kind of belief and hope that we need to have in order to make the things that we know are important happen in our world, it takes work. You have to fight against the tide. And that's where the song Reach came from. If I could reach higher, just for one moment, touch the sky. For that one moment in my life, I'm gonna be stronger. You see, stronger is a word that I use a lot in my songs because it's what music has done for me. It's made me stronger. And I want my music to be that for others as well. And today, for me, is kind of full circle. I had the opportunity in 1995, the great honor, to perform and sing a song for His Holiness, Pope John Paul II in the Vatican. Now, talk about daunting, I had the Pope sitting on stage with me. And in the audience, cardinals, bishops, nuns, very, uh, very elevated souls. And uh, I did not know that the Pope had been listening to my music. And when they invited me and asked me to do this particular song, I could understand completely why, because it's not a song that I wrote, but it's a song that I chose because of its message, because of what it says. And uh, now that we have a new pope from Latin America, which we're very proud to have and who is already making changes, Pope Francis, we already see, we feel the energy that is coming. The world is hopeful and sees that here is someone that is going to lead us and have incredible values and have a lot to share with the world and I'm especially proud that he's from Latin America. And I'd like to share a little bit with you of that song. I'm gonna translate to English what the song is singing at the beginning because it, it's in Spanish, but I'd like to uh, share with you that experience that I had in 1995. <laughs> Al di là del dolore, al di là delle lacrime, al di là del rancore, dice in una strofa, dentro ogni cuore brilla la luce dell'amore. Gloria a Stefan. Holy Father, on behalf of my family, I would like to congratulate you on your 50 years of service in the priesthood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for all the work you've done worldwide for the betterment of human rights and ask you to pray for peace on earth. Santo Padre, le pido sus oraciones para que se abran las puertas de la libertad en mi tierra natal y en todo el mundo. When you give without expecting anything in return, when you truly love, when you give forgiveness instead of resentment, there's peace in your heart. Far beyond any bitterness of tears, of pain, the light of love shines through inside in each one of our hearts. Illusion, hope, 
Christmas. Set your dreams to fly. Offer peace. Give love. That the whole world needs much more of that. And it is true, we need so much more, each of us. And through my life, I've tried to share that in any way I can, but very especially through music. And I feel privileged and blessed to be able to have done so. And I thank everyone that has listened, and I will continue to do so. And I know that the love that saved me, you're sharing with me. Thank you very much. Gloria Estefan. Thank you. Thank you.